disease. This represents hundreds. It's just these discs have value to it. It shifts over. It's similar to the money, how a piece of paper money has that value, and the kids kind of look at it and like, it's all the same shape. Why do you have different values? And they'll give you a five thinking it's a one, same thing. But it's, we shift over and then to using these discs because here's your concrete going to your abstract where we draw those dots to represent a number to why this works. So, yeah. Take it in. We have a place value chart. When we had this number 957, we represent 900, nine dots on it. Again, you see those groups of five, ten, uh, five tens, and seven ones. And then when you're asking kids to write an expanded form, what does that nine mean? They're like, they're, it's nine, it's five, it's seven. You have arrow cards also inside that, inside there, hopefully. And once you take those cards away, you can see the expanded form. That it's not nine, it's, it's 900, it's five tens, it's seven ones. So second grade parents, you also are getting uh, these arrow cards to help expand notation for some kids. So the digits are not just a nine, a five, and a seven. Um, How do the arrow cards work? So you basically cut them out, and then they uh, go corner to corner. So once they, and then they'll make this nice uh, digit, and then once you, and then you can expand it, and then you can see what those digits mean. Um, I want to really have time for you guys to work in small groups. So, this is where you take your counts out. <laughs> Go like this. <laughs> and websites. Resources that we use. Our curriculum is not hidden. It's in the Engage New York. It's also in Great Minds. Great Minds has, um, they, they're the same company. We, so I would say go to Great Minds, start an account, download their stuff. Um, K-5 math teaching resources, great for games. Oh, forgot. You know those base 10 blocks that you guys have, and I don't want you guys to purchase them because there's no reason you should be purchasing them. There's this interactive site where you can actually just, you can do the same tools that we just talked about on the computer. So I'm not recommending a computer, but if you do need it, it's there. So these two are interactive math material sites. Well, when you need a material, you don't have it, you can go to those sites. You just need Adobe Classroom. Can I just get a raise? You can, uh, kindergarten parents, can you raise your hands? Okay. You might need to use another one. I don't know. We'll see. Kindergarten, we're going to move you guys. Okay, so here I have, her, I have three sets of 10. 10, 10, and 10. So I know that 19, we're doing 19 plus 5. So 19 is one set of 10. And then 9, 1. So I'm going to take away 1. So then I have 19. And then if I need to add 5, I know this is 10 here, so I'm going to five, 5 here, so that I can count 10 plus 9 is 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Awesome. Go to this way. Can somebody explain what's happening here? It says 9 plus 5. It says 1 here, 4 here. It says 19 plus 1 equals 20, 20 plus 4 equals 20. Okay, I see shaking heads. Be bold. I forgot name Oh wait, can we have a representation of that? Oh, right here. Yes. So, so there's Diane's holding up one. This is one one way a kid did it, right? Mm -hmm. This is what this table did. That's oh, what one. That's so funny. The opposite colors. <laughs> So, can somebody explain what's happening? Uh, Anna, do you know the parents' names? Oh, hi. Can I have an Amy, Tate? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, what am I saying here? Yeah, what do you, well, does this, do you understand what's going on here? When you see a kid doing this, am I, am I just saying, oh yeah, it is 24, that's good. What's happening here? Why did this child go, what up that swat? What is happening here? Why is this a one and a four here? Right. I 
Talk about the grouping element. So the, you know, like we talked about earlier, when you start with the fives and then the tens and then the, what, what the landmark number, mm -hmm. so you have 20 as a landmark number, mm -hmm. five as a landmark number. So, okay. And so so uh -huh. they, they're trying to get to their landmark numbers and then... And how did this child get to the landmark number? Well, by adding the, the one, two, three, or by breaking down the five, the five to the one and the four. Because yeah. that five. Right, because they want to break this is five, break up into one and four, and then what happens to that one and the four? What do they do with that one? Uh, Joanne! <laughs> okay. Charles! What do they do with that one? Visually, you take one of the five numbers, you take the blue one, and you can make an even, you know, you can make two even groups. Of what? Oh, so they put that one to the, to the what? 19. 19. Yeah. Kids will say, I put it one to that. I'm like, what's that? 19. And then now you have 20 and that 20 and four, 24. So make, you'll hear kids calling the make 10 strategy. Yeah. Okay. So you'll hear that part. Um, you'll see it like, this is what it eventually turns into, this representation. But it's where we start off again. This is where the concrete happens. This tool is great for it. Rack and rack. Can anyone use a rack and rack for it? Why can you use a rack and rack for it? It's what? Doesn't show the work. Doesn't show the work? It's hard. It's harder to move. It's, it's only twenty. You need something more than twenty. And. How will it show the end? How will it show? Because it'll just show 24, but it never gave you the step to get to 24. With these cubes, I can see what you did to get to 24. With a five group drawing, when you're circling or using different colors, you can see it, and then here's also representation of it. Did anyone get to this one? What's your name? MC. MC. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. So we moved into five, <laughs> and then we subtracted the eight, the eight um, unit mm -hmm. into that total. Into that total. What do you guys think? Started with 15, and then how do they minus that eight, or subtract that eight? Where the, was the eight coming from? Whoever took the second sheet, Naomi. <laughs> 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 yeah, I call Naomi. Call okay. the next one. Naomi. Okay. So they, they took a group of five. Yeah. And then they, they broke the other group of, another group of five down into two and three, and they took the three and the five away. From here. From here. Okay. So inside this 15, you can still see the eight in here and in here, right? Is there another way to do it? You're just holding it. <laughs> so if I had 15 here, I could, here's this 15, I could take it from this five and then left, and then take the left over, right? And here's my, what I have here. But where else can I subtract it from? From 10? From 10? No, other 10 times 10. Wow. So then that's why we take the we know because there's it's easier to calculate everything and subtract from 10. You learn all these facts of 10 in your entire life. There's a reason for it. Here's that 10. You see that 10. There's enough for me to take uh, subtract 8 from here. Right? So then the leftover is this. And what's usually troubling, what's difficult for kids, what do you do with this? Mm -hmm. And um, it takes a lot of practice to realize I don't throw this extra away. So um, again, you realize that in 15, broke it into 10 and 5, took it from 10, okay? And then this strategy can actually even work with almost, it work, even works with bigger numbers, and I think you guys should try it. It's true. And then, last thing, going to second grade. Um, place value. Understanding a base uh, 10 system is so important. So we start with possible six, and we give it a thousand possible six to the kids, and we ask them, how do I know if there's a thousand in there? And they said, well, we can group them in two, we can group them into tens, we can group them in fives. 
So we finally agreed on grouping into tens, and you realize that you start with one, ten ones will make a ten, ten tens will make a hundred. You start with this, then lead to the base ten blocks, which you'll see on your table, so that they, the kids can understand why those blocks are organized the way they are. So if you're holding up the blue flag, what is that? Hundred. This is a hundred. Why is that a hundred? Well, how do you know that's a hundred? Or who's convinced that that's a hundred besides Ada is convinced that that's a hundred? Do you guys do you guys agree that blue flat is hundred? Why is that? 100? So inside there, there's that ten tens in there, and then how many ones are in there? A hundred. A hundred. Those ones. And some kids don't believe it, and I love them. See, it's true. Then they'll stop after twenty and say, "Oh." No <laughs> so those base ten blocks, you'll see them. Um, it's something that we purchased, but it's, it makes no sense until we kind of start with the popsicle sticks, starting with things that we know, and then it moves on to these place value discs. What are these discs about? That calls them. What do you notice about these discs? How about Becca? Becca? Um, they are. But then when we have to do drawing, and you no longer have a 10 stick, we encourage kids to draw it in groups of five. Because when kids are drawing seven things, how do you know there's seven things without recounting them? Because I just did it where Beth was like, draw eight. I drew eight without grouping them. I'm like, I don't know if I can eat. Because it's hard to see it with, instead of groups of five. So it's similar to back then when we were taught to draw in tally marks. But the difference is the, you know, the, uh, fifth tally is always crossing over, but this one you can see the groups of five. Um, and we're building the concept of five and ten as landmark numbers. So if you know, if you start to visually just see five, then you start to see those relationships. Just like earlier, someone saw that ten frame two was missing, so they knew that that was eight. They saw that relationship. And building up those relationships around five and ten will support kids as they get into bigger numbers because we map all those relationships repeat. So they'll be given a sheet. So say if they have to solve seven and two, there is a sheet which you guys will be getting that has a five, five already started for them. But they have to understand, well, how am I going to do seven and two more? If I already have five, if they know that relationship between five and seven, they'll draw just two more that to make it seven, and then I have to add two more to make it to figure out what's seven and two. But in subtraction, what I found it more helpful for subtraction is that, again, if you have to do seven minus two, again, that five is there, what do I need to start with? I need to start with seven, and then what happens to the two? So I just, so it's, it's seeing that you can see five. You don't have to go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's five. It's already there. So that's why you, um, first grade parents, you can get a sheet that has that five group. And then, just want to show you some examples. Um, these are the things we often expect kids to just kind of know, like seven minus seven. You should just know it because it's seven minus seven. They haven't had time to generalize it. Having the five group drawing allows them to say, wait, here, I need to start with seven. Wait, I need to subtract seven. Oh, I need to draw eight. I need to subtract eight. So they're making general, this five group drawing allows them to make generalization that we think like kids should know, but they don't haven't had time to discover. So it's giving them discovery. So when you're doing homework, why are you drawing them? The drawing allows them to see what's happening. So that's important. And with subtraction, there's the basics, subtracting one, subtracting zero. Those are subtracting zero and subtracting itself seems to be the hardest for kids to understand because why would I subtract zero? Um, Subtracting five, the interesting part is, will your kids go one, two, three, four, five, or will they see the five this way? So, and subtracting one less than itself. That's also part. Um, then once we move from sub adding subtracting within 10, we move to adding subtracting within 20, and that's where the recommend comes in. And if you notice on your table, you have this, that tool called recommend, and what do you notice about that? Anyways? So interesting, no one's seen this yet. Shipping it. 
When we give it to the kids, the first thing they want to do is just like a rattle. They're just shaking it back and forth. And then, and then how do you hold it? It's interesting. How are you holding this? Keep going. Keep rotating, Agatha. Keep rotating. Keep rotating. There you go. Say again. There's, that's why that, that smiley face is there, right? That smiley face is to help you orient where, which direction do you hold it. Because some kids will hold it up and down, like this, and wondering what, how are you supposed to use this tool. So um, the ones we finally got have, have a smiley face on it, and we are starting with the red and then the white. So people who have more than just two rows of 10, we tend to, oh wait, that can't be good. <coughs> Huh. Interesting. Every company does something different. So, can you hold yours up? So they're starting with the. Can it be flipped? It won't sand, right? Can you flip it? No. No. So in their case, they're they're starting the white. Here we're starting with the red. Red is. Um, all of us are starting with the red. So the dark ones. Mm. <laughs> so what do you notice about these wrecking wrecks? Besides this, there's two rows of ten. What else is special about these two rows of ten? I get louder. There's groups of five, right? Can, if you have the wrecking wreck, can you and the partner or your table mates make the number twelve? Show twelve. Okay. Oh, interesting. That's just really important. So, one thing, this is called the active side. Anything on this side is inactive? Right? So, we don't look at those. You're supposed to, whatever you put on this side is what is the active part. So, this is the part where we're supposed to look at. So, if I'm looking here, there's 20 beads here. But, so when you're making it, you have to make it on this side. And then whatever's not on this side is not what you're looking at. But some kids do look at it because if you look at 12, how did some people make 12? Everyone did it as, ooh, hold. So I see it. I see it this version and I see it that version. Oh, and then you have it on the inactive side. So you gotta slide it over to the active side here. But there's either 10 and two or the 10 looks like this, 10 and two here, right? You can see there's that flexibility. And then if I ask you, well, here's 12, how many more to 20? That's when you might, what are you gonna do to see how many more to 20? How do you see eight? Look on the other side. That's, so it's, what's great about the wreck and wreck is it's organized. It's not, not, not like the, the cubes that you have at the table where it's gonna, if you tell the kids to make 12, it's, it's going to be all over the place. This is organized. But, direction. A lot of kids tend to make everything on this side because it's like this side. <laughs> <laughs> everything is on the opposite side of where you're asking. So that's why the smile, smile face is important to make, this is the active side. And then for some kids, it's so important they might, it's too much for them to see both sides, so having it covered. So today, if you're in first grade, you'll be making recommends with Diane, and you guys can talk about how can you make it where it can be useful for your child. And remember to put the smile face when you make those recommends. Um, so there's pros and cons to recommends. It's useful for some kids, it's confusing for some kids. So again, if that's, if that's the case, you also have the five group drawing that extends beyond just 10. And again, um, so it looks like this, and then eventually, by the end of first grade, going to second, it's called 10-6. Basically, if I can take this thing, hold it the other way. Actually, you have it inside your bin. Can you guys find your, ten, your five group drawing that has a 10 in it? It's in the sheet protectors. So look through the sheet protectors, and then, and there's a seat in the back. Can I record? Is that okay? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, sorry I have to take your hand. Um, 
this is a five group room. This is more than five, you ten group, and then eventually it looks like uh, and six. So again, the direction changes to mimic um, the tools that you'll see in second grade as well. So what's great about this stuff? Things can change. What's not great about the measurement? You'll have to use uh, clothes pins to kind of make the, the uh, beats not fall up and down. But you can actually play around with it.